uh, today I'm going to talk about how Toto is built a thousand people strong evangelist network, a community of evangelists, even before we launch our product. Uh, it's 2023. Uh, the funding is not so uh, you know generous, and everybody is looking for a very cost efficient GTM strategy, and that's the topic of today's talk. Uh, I'm going to talk about fintech, consumer fintech GTM. All consumer fintech needs a combination of high trust or to cover that very high reward uh, in order for people to come and try them because it generally involves payment or money. Uh, some large startups in the past have used high level of rewards to get people on board. Most other have to create some of the other hack to get people to try them. We uh, utilized um, a community building tactic to get a lot of users even before we launched. We did not have that kind of money, so we did it for free. And I'm going to share how we did it for free. So I'm going to share this case study in three um, sections. The first is understanding uh, your TG, how to understand them in real depth, uh, a very fine persona. The second part would be how to uncover, how to think about that personality as a whole and not just a user of your application or product. And the third part would be how to deliver an authentic value to your target audience, which might or might not revolve around your main product and therefore create a real connection, which turns your uh, you know audience into your evangelist. Uh, in the end, I'll share uh, the, the outcomes that we had after implementing these strategies and also the key takeaway. So I'll start with uh, what Tortoise. So Tortoise was my previous product that we launched in 2021. And it's a save now buy later product where people can save a smaller amount over three to six months to 12 months time in order to buy an iPhone or to uh, buy a large vacation through Make My Trip. Uh, these were the two products we launched with. And idea was to expand the list of things that you can uh, save up for. The rate of interest, effective rate of interest that we were offering through this product was more than 20% versus 4 or 5% you would get in a recurring deposit in your bank. It was definitely a great um, uh, outcome for people. However, it involved depositing, so to say, uh, more than 60, 70,000 rupees with a company which is small and unknown called Tortoise, uh, where we were literally asking people to start depositing, you know, 5,000, 10,000 rupees every month. Uh, and then buy at the end of six months, eight months, 10 months time. And so this requires very high level of trust. Um, our investor said that Vardhan, if you can get 500 people to pay up, uh, and this was 2021. So obviously we are talking about very low standard for uh, next round of funding. Our investor said that if we can get 500 paying people, uh, we can start pitching to Series A investors and, and someone might uh, fund us. So we had that target of you know uh, reaching 500 paying customers within three months time and uh, after the launch and our launch was almost a couple of months uh, later because we were waiting for multiple uh, you know external integrations that were not in our hand so this two months of time we wanted to do whatever we can to garner as much interest for our product now the usual tactics which are uh, utilized our waiting list and talking about a product and we realized that our product was very uh, confusing, uh, very difficult to understand for most people who are not familiar with the concept of, uh, uh, you know, recurring deposits or uh, compounding interest rates. And so we wanted it easy to understand. And uh, we realized that if we launch some sort of wait list or we offer some sort of very high referral rewards or reward system, uh, we will be one of the hundreds of different people trying to do that. So we, and then at that point of time, Jupiter was asked, offering 10,000, 5,000 rupees worth of rewards and that we could not afford. So we wanted to try something which was not as high cost. And uh, that's when we started thinking between the team, but what can we do? And uh, which brings us to my first point. I think the first thing before creating a GTM is to identify who you are selling to. Now, usually people want to sell it to as many people as possible. You know, you, the world is my target audience. And unfortunately, that's a short short recipe to fail because no product will appeal to everyone. Obviously, it will reach at some point of time to a scale where a large population will like it. But as you might have noticed, like for example, WhatsApp in 2020, uh, 2010, 2011, a uh, very small number of smartphone users, early users were using it. Now your dad and mom use it more than you do probably. 
And so, so the curve adoption curve happens, but to start with, you have to find a very narrow audience. Uh, and that narrow audience can be disheartening for most entrepreneurs because you're you're at one point of time you're pitching to the VC that our target market or our addressable market is so large, but when you come inside and you switch to the product team, uh, you're talking about a very very small uh, target audience, and we are talking about you know maybe maybe one lakh people in India, maybe ten thousand real uh, possible users in India who you want to target. In our case. For tortoise, our target audience were Gen Zs who were in the job where not earning more than a lakh rupees per month. And they want an iPhone. Our launch product was iPhone. iPhone is the most desirable product ever on earth. People have sold kidneys, literally, people have sold kidneys for that. Uh, and this is a real, real uh, information. And we thought that if, if we can not create a demand for a saving plan for iPhone, then we can't create it for anything. So we wanted the most excited people for iPhone, which is obviously Gen Zs who understand how to use iPhone, they use Instagram phones, and this product is very desirable for them. But only those who have a shot at achieving that means they should be earning something. So these are employed uh, salaried people who are making not more than, uh, you know, 70, 80,000 rupees in hand, because if they are earning more than that, they can simply go and buy today. They need to save for it. So ideally, anyone who is earning 40, 50,000 rupees at least and are going up to 70, 80,000 rupees and uh, they are uh, reputed, I mean, they are uh, working in some of these companies where the income is fixed and they are looking at buying an iPhone in the next six to eight months time. They don't have an iPhone today. That is the first level of audience uh, distillation that we did. The second level that we tried to understand was how these people, uh, what are these people, how do they uh, look at buying a phone? Uh, and we realized that if we are looking at person who is old and is still in this age bracket, uh, in this salary bracket, for example, you might be a bank employee and you might be 40 years old and your salary might be 50,000 rupees per month. They might have qualified in a previous criteria, but they would not qualify in this. So we are looking at people who are also just graduated in between two, three years time, uh, which is what I said, Gen Z's. And these are the people who are right now using smartphones very heavily. And second criteria, which we realized at that point of time, we wanted to keep was that these should not be the typical top engineers in Bangalore, because uh, even if they are not earning right now, they might be interning, they might have a loose salary right now, but very quickly they'll uh, reach that point where they might not look at savings. So we wanted to specifically reach out to people who are in non-tech roles. And these people are on Instagram. They spend their time with friends going out. They definitely want to flaunt more of their recently earning salary. And they usually do not understand investing really well. However, they understand there's a bank where they keep their money to have interest. So this is the level of uh, depth that we went into. We also went into creating names for these personalities. We also uh, went to the depth of you know creating the kind of conversations these guys have, the kind of language that they use with, with each other. This was important because we wanted to understand the next step, which is our next point. That apart from saving, which is what our product was, what other things these people value. Now, our target audience, meanwhile, was someone who is not an engineer, but employed in one of these tech companies that we wanted to target because they should be very social media savvy. And more importantly, between the founders, we were mostly connected to startups and we wanted to leverage our own network to get these people on board. So we wanted to have people who are in this circle of you know Bangalore, Gurgaon, uh, usual tax tech circle where they're employed, they see people around them using iPhones, they aspire for one. And so we thought that look, uh, what are the other things that these guys value? They obviously envy the high salaries which are which are which are given to product managers and the tech pros around them. You might be a person who got placed in TCS making 30,000 30, rupees per month. And you have your other friend who joined, say, uh, you know, Flipkart. <laughs> He's making 2 lakh rupees a month. How do we capture on that need? And, and EdTech was a big wave at that point of time. This was 2021. So we realized that these are, the, these are also the people who are looking to break into startups, which, I mean, there might be 100 other things that they're doing, but this is something that we were very familiar with between the founders and the early team members at Tortoise. We were five of us. Uh, including one intern, so four full time and one intern. We all of us were from a uh, startup background, and we understood startups really well. We understand. I built and sold a startup in the past, 
Uh, I've worked with some of the top tech companies, including Udacity and then TripAdvisor in India. Uh, I understood and just completed a stint with FAMPAY. Great GTML, take the examples of FAMPAY as well. So we realized that we understand startups really well. And that is the value that we can also provide to these potential users of tortoise. So we, and this is, this is, I mean, in the hindsight, we are, I, I might be sounding very confident, but when we were thinking about it, it was not as clear. It was just a, uh, just a uh, experiment that we tried. And so I made a post, a very non-assuming experimental post on LinkedIn, uh, saying that, look, we are a recently funded uh, startup. We raised capital from uh, Better Capital and a bunch of other great angels. And we are looking to share our journey to create this startup called Tortoise from pre-product to launch of product. And this experience is the most coveted, most exciting experience that anybody could have. And we are willing to share it with 100 people. And we are happy to bear all. We will share everything. How did we raise funds? How did we pitch everything to these, these members of this program? And this is the key thing. We said this will called Tortoise Founders Fellowship Program. Now, this could have been called something else, but I remember fellowship is a, is a word that I really like myself. Uh, and there's a long story about it, but fellowship sounds really cool. Fellowship is not some membership. Fellowship is something which is much more prestigious. And as you attach a selection process, it becomes much more prestigious. And biggest point, it was something which required you to be selected, not pay anything and still learn something from people who are actually doing it with some credentials. All our team members were very, um, you know, they were trustworthy as far as their credentials goes. This is what we proposed. And um, we use extensively, we use Canva. Canva is the best tool ever for non-tech founders. And Canva was my go-to thing for everything. So we created a very nice looking tortoise with fonts, uh, saying tortoise fonts fellowship program. Um, it looked really classy, posted this post and provided the link. Uh, we, we were hoping that we'll reach 100 applications so that we can select all of them. But in two weeks time, uh, this post went viral. Everybody caught attention. We received 1,200 applications within two weeks, 1,200 applications. Uh, Mind-blowing thing, but also it resulted in how do we select these people. We, in fact, asked people their compensation in the um, in the in the form in the application form, which is Google form, and people uh, people told what what was the earning. Remember, we were targeting people who were earning less than we wanted our fellow to be our target audience as well. So so that was one of the filters that we used. But anyway, we created this application called Twelve Hundred Application. I'll talk about the program later. But this was the second part. Uh, we identified a value that we could provide from our expertise, which was not related to the actual product. Uh, this helps because then you don't come across as someone who's trying to sell your product. If we had created a program around how to save, this is an obvious thing that you're trying to create a community with obvious use case. Here we were actually looking at what are the use case we can appeal to with our expertise, which is not related to a product, which brings to my third point. The third point is that unless you are authentic in your value to someone who you are asking to invest their time or money, both. You cannot really form a connection. Uh, you cannot uh, try to bypass this through templatizing or be cheap about your efforts or creativity, which you need to invest. As founders were trying to get people to trust them with their hard-earned money, you cannot be unauthentic in your approach towards what you're trying to deliver which means exposing all of your fears, all of your preparation, all of your uh, outcomes in as bare format as possible. And this, this will take you to the kind of outcome that we achieved. So I'll, I'll now talk about what we did in Tortoise Founders Fellowship Program. And I'll tell you what was the outcome of it. Tortoise Founders Fellowship Program, when it was launched, uh, the application was launched, as I said, we received 1200 applications. We asked some of the most ridiculous questions. Some were uh, required to be in subjective format. And we were lucky and honored to be getting those many people to respond. We got some of the top uh, VC analysts and even principals applying for this. We got some of the founders from recently you know, funded and well-doing startups to apply for this. And we got a lot of students and a lot of uh, early stage members from these tech companies and large tech companies applying for this. And what we did was, uh, because we didn't have any time to select, we went crazy on how to select them 
we utilize uh, numbers, uh, salary numbers to filter everyone who was making a lot of money or not making enough money. Uh, we then utilize the locations of people. We optimize for locations where we could serve them well, which is Gurgaon and, and uh, uh, Bangalore. We then also focused on the English written in the uh, in the answers. We simply used Grammarly to see how many red marks are coming for each question. And we realized that we wanted people who are articulate. And because this was around exciting them about our product and then making them our evangelists. So if they can't write well, if they can't communicate well, they won't be able to spread our idea. So we took English as one of the things, English or comprehension as one of the things of selection. We ended up selecting uh, 180 folks for this program. And we created groups of seven, eight people, 24 groups of such people. We utilize Slack to communicate with them. And we use Notion extensively to create a course of six weeks, which every week contain uh, on, on Sunday, we would give a presentation on what needs to be done and the whole journey. We started with how to think about the idea, how to test the market, how to measure the market, then how to create a pitch, how to pitch to an investor, how to do the user interviews, how to create a, a, you know, a, a pitch to the user, uh, then how to launch the first version of the product. This is what we were doing. And this is what we were telling as well. And because we were actually doing this, we were able to share this whole journey along with us with these 180 folks. And it was chaotic. It was not easy. We, we must have worked at least, uh, and we were required to build our own product. Huh? So we spent more than five to six hours per day for all seven days for all these six weeks, creating uh, the material, creating the test, creating the uh, evaluation method, uh, creating the WhatsApp group apart from Slack, and creating notion pages for everyone to meet each other. We created these groups so that they are they're formed around a case team kind of a structure. And we implemented a self-evaluation between the team so that we don't have to evaluate every single output. This was our way to make it more efficient. And then we unleashed all the knowledge that we accumulated along, you know, we I've created a company in past in 2013, I'm the part of this ecosystem. So we generated all these uh, insights uh, from our own experience and we put it our heart out on these presentation and gave, we gave these talks. And then we had one hour uh, session with each team at the end of the week uh, separately. So we were coordinating with uh, three of us were coordinators, eight teams each. So eight hours of one-on-one -on -one calls in the weekend, then the homework, and then on the Saturday presentation on Sunday, again, uh, around, uh, you know, discussing the next week work. Um, ultimately, we got these people to do 500 plus interviews on our product. We uncovered the insights on uh, whether we were thinking right or wrong about our pitch, whether the product made sense or not, whether our, there are any takers of this product or not. Uh, what are the key considerations that users have when they look at a new product, asking them for money and so on and so forth. And we made a lot of changes on our product thanks to all these great feedback that was given by some of the most enthusiastic, capable people who were doing all the work for us without expecting anything. We also had a budget of 50,000 rupees, which we uh, created split between uh, the value on this iPhone reward that we were giving. Um, so if you create a saving plan for iPhone, we will put a little uh, 3,000, 4,000 rupees from our side as well on top of what we were already providing. Uh, and half of them were actual Amazon vouchers that we wanted to give so that it doesn't look like that we are purely doing it for, uh, you know, utilizing, for these people to utilize our application. So we were authentic in our, uh, uh, you know, uh, disclosure on what is in the end. But to our surprise, most people didn't care about those rewards. What they cared about to our surprise was uh, the fact that they were given certificates issued by us, hosted on Amazon servers, which said that they have completed Tortoise Fellowship Program, uh, which was something which uh, we didn't realize how powerful this was. Even if you today search Tortoise, you will get a lot more number. I think it is 10 people team. Uh, you'll get a lot more people who have written Tortoise as a place of past employment where they've mentioned Tortoise Fellowship Program. This also resulted in a couple of other companies doing fellowship programs after us. But more importantly, this helped us and this is the main part. This helped us launch uh, after two months when we launched this uh, on the in the first week itself, 
out of the member there was 500 people that our investor said that we need to you know become big we got 200 payments on day one mostly because of these people and the and the things that they have talked about in their own networks about tortoise creating a ripple effect of trust that we were able to generate and 200 payments came within first week of launch and we were able to cross the hurdle and remember these are not free product signs these are signs that require you to pay at least 5000 rupees from your pocket uh, huge amount huge trust required and and this was i think one of the most successful paid product launch uh, most startups might have seen in india and uh, and then which which resulted in our firm belief that you can and this is the key takeaway you can leverage your uh, authentic um, you know willingness to give uh, to the community and your existing expertise to your target audience in order to create trust that is required for them to cross the line of using your product um, so that's that's my key takeaway um, i think a few other startups that i would want to mention that have done successfully in my experience for example fanpay has really cracked it fanpay uh, had to wait one year for the card. Fampi is a teenage banking startup uh, where uh, teenagers below 18 years of age can get a prepaid card and use it for UPI and card payments. Uh, this is a fintech product which requires a lot of collaborations with existing product players and required a lot of waiting until they actually could launch the product. So till they launch, they understood that their target audience was teenagers who are studying in schools. And what do you need? This is a founding team coming from IIT Roorkee. Now guess what, what they provided as the key uh, uh, value apart from this card to their target audience. So they conducted a lot of sessions on how to create IIT exam and they created groups around that. Then they created uh, groups around uh, overachievers in schools and they focused their stories and asked people to collate such posts, wrote blog posts, uh, and created a network for that. And this way, they were able to engage a huge community. And when the card launched, I think everybody knows FAMP is one of the most successful uh, Series A in India. I think they raised $40 million, which was, the, I, if, if I remember right, second biggest uh, Series A ever. And they have more than a million card users now. All just this authentic efforts to connect with their users, which is not very transactional. Um, all the best. Uh, this, I believe, is a great strategy for anyone looking for cost-efficient GTM. Thanks.